Sentry mode activated. Target acquired. Hey there, hunters, and welcome back to the Gunners Guild. So today in Remnant, we're going to talk about the new game mode, Survival, and how to get through it. The game mode was added in the Swamps of Courses DLC, and is effectively a roguelike mode for the game. You know, you start at a central area, the Labyrinth, where you can buy items from a small, randomly rolled set of gear. Then you can head out to a random biome and kill the boss. Kill the boss while looting scrap and gear along the way, come back, rinse and repeat until you die. There's a timer up there on the top left that ticks down, and when it's done, the monsters will level up, and the game just gets harder. The time you have is based on your difficulty, so harder difficulties have shorter time before monsters level up. Also on Nightmare and Apocalypse, your timer does not pause while you're in the labyrinth, so it's extra zoomy. So why should I play this game mode, you ask? Well, you get special account bound gear for all your characters for doing it. By getting 5 boss kills in a single game, you get the adventurer goggles, it's just extra scrap pickup, no big deal. 10 boss kills in a game will get you the hero sword, which is basically like the normal sword, but the charge attack has extra reach with the cool blue fire it throws out. It's kind of cool. 50 boss kills gets you this amulet that gives you some mad experience boost. 1% per kill up to 50% and it resets when you touch a checkpoint. It's kind of nuts for new characters to be honest. At 75 boss kills, you get the Daredevil Charm, which is hands down the best item in the game. You get 30% more damage per missing piece of armor. It's absolutely insane, so you get double damage basically. Then finally, at 100 total boss skills, you get the Black Rose, which is an amulet that acts like a set piece of whatever is equipped in your chest slot. So you can run 3 piece of one set and 1 piece of another. It's another outstanding amulet because there are some crazy good combinations you can do with it. So yeah, there are incentives to play survival, and you get some sweet stuff for all your characters, including all your hardcore characters and any new characters you make. Also, it's just fun. Like, really fun. I find myself spending way more time running through survival rather than doing adventure or campaign stuff now. That being said, as much as I love survival, I do hear people are having issues with it, struggling to get past 3 or 4 bosses, or just not knowing what to do and how to do it. So I'll take the time to explain my procedures for survival and how to get through it. Now for reference, I'm usually getting around the high 20s, mid 30s for boss kills on hard solo. I would play Nightmare and Apocalypse, but I like to take breaks and stretch and stuff since the sessions can be like 3-5 to five hours long, and at harder difficulties, they don't let you do that, so, you know, yeah. Anyway, let's just get into this. First is that you only have a thousand scrap to spend, which is plenty, but if there are a lot of other good items you want, you can sell your ammo boxes. You really shouldn't need them, especially early on. I think I've only used like two ammo boxes like at all times. You can get an extra 200 scrap by selling two of the three that you get, so you know, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it definitely helps. Now since the items are generated at the shops at random, you kind of have to learn to use basically everything. All weapons in the game are pretty much solid, so don't be afraid of experimenting with weapons you don't normally use. In this case, though, I would absolutely always pick a long gun first. Doing a boss with just a pistol is going to be rough as balls. The only case where I could see myself not doing this is if the Daredevil charm is for sale, but even then, that's only 400 scrap, so you should be able to get that and a long gun. But for whatever reason, you don't have to get a long gun if you don't want to. You can just not sell your ammo boxes, not, you know, whatever. Just make do with the daredevil charm. Next is armor though. Now this is a tricky one because it's kind of fine to do the first couple bosses with no armor, but eventually you're going to want something. Even if you're using daredevil's charm, you want like a piece of lettos like for the chest piece. It gives you an extra 15% damage so you're not losing a whole lot. Plus you get a ton of armor to scale with the bark skin trait and those flasks so you won't get one tapped. However, there are a list of items you really want to see right away. First are the scrap boosty items. The scavenger's bobble for 25% extra scrap is just awesome. The scrap bonus also applies when you pick up duplicate items, so you can get an extra 100 or 2 scrap when picking stuff up. Also, one piece of adventurers for the extra 20% scrap is another thing I'd get right away. Scrap is very important early on to get extra gear and save money for those 1 hour long buffs you get later on. You can grab a piece of the labyrinth armor to magnetically pull the scrap, but that's not really a big deal. Now, the other items you're going to want are the experience boosting ones. The sage stone ring for 10% more experience doesn't sound like a whole lot, but trust me it helps. Since you can't upgrade equipment in survival, the best way to not get one shot is to stay above enemy levels. Eventually they will catch up to you and pass you, but this will stop it for a couple more rounds. There's also the talisman of perseverance, which you can get up to 15% more experience gain. It's fine, but it's also up to the map layouts, like if you get two areas before a boss, it's great, otherwise it barely catches up to Sage Stone. 
If there's nothing else, I'd take this. For everything else though, I recommend having a build in mind and just buy armor pieces accordingly. If you're comfortable with the set on your main character, I would stick to that and try that build in survival. The most deaths I've seen are coming from people who don't know the ideal ranges of their weapons or are using armors they're not familiar with and end up getting a fat roll and dying. The only armor I'd actively advise on not getting are the twisted armor because health regen kind of sucks and the elder armor because that's more of a group buffing armor. That being said, if you're in a group and someone should absolutely run the elder armor, 35% more damage for everyone's kind of insane, just don't use it solo. Kind of a roundabout way of explaining it I guess, but all armor is pretty much good. You just kind of have to know what pairs well with the weapons and stuff, which is why I recommend building something that you're already familiar with, especially if you want to just do the 10 kill streak and be done with it. Now once you have or haven't purchased your armor, I recommend spending your leftover scrap on one of each of the status healing items. They're only 50 scrap a pop and you can save your life in a pinch. When you return from bosses, the shops will also change their stock, so remember to always check them after every single boss if you're still looking for gear. Now for future spendings, I would be careful though because scrap is very important. So let's go over some of the other things you can buy. First off, for dragon hearts. I would recommend just getting one or two of the upgrades early on so you can have like five hearts, but don't get more than that. They become really expensive and most likely you're just going to die and not be able to use them. It's going to be some bad wombo combo or one shot. Survival isn't really a place where you're going to be taking a lot of hits, just one bad one. Plus these things start to cost like 2-4k to 4K per upgrade and it gets kind of gross. Now along these are the trait books. So the thing with the trait books is that they're really good but only kind of when you're late into the run so save it for then. Traits max at 20 even in survival and if you pick up a trait book that you already have 20 of you're just going to get scrapped. So the plan here is to save the trait book purchases for when you have 2 or 3 traits maxed and a bunch at like 15 to 18. It's the best way to finish up all your traits rather than RNG spawning for books that you already have maxed out. Uh, plus you don't have to run around maps as much and as you get further in that's just wasting a lot of time. So just dump all your money into traits when you're at the end game. If you don't plan on going past like 20 bosses or so then it's not a big deal for you just go ahead and buy them. But for long term running, it's better to avoid these until you can buy like 15 at once and wrap up all your traits. Now what you should be doing is spending your money on equipment so you can deal with a variety of situation. Or the 1 hour long buffs. The armor flask isn't hugely important until later, but the HP and stamina ones are tremendously helpful. I'd start by buying these flasks after you're about your 5th boss and just keep them up at all times. They get more expensive every time you buy them like everything else, which is why you really need to save your money and don't spend on things that you don't need to. Alright, so from here it's time to go out and survive. Explaining the actual survival process is kind of difficult because honestly it's just playing the game at this point. One key thing to this whole thing is being efficient. You really have to mind that timer. Memorizing map layouts and recognizing patterns is going to save you a lot of time here, and that just usually comes with experience. Chests and books have like pretty much set spawn locations you can memorize where they are based on the map layouts and just check those areas but try not to get sidetracked and definitely don't backtrack. Places like earth are a nightmare for loot because all the chests are in buildings which is just way out of the way for the most part. I recommend just running through the maps and beelining it to the boss. It's a great way to save time. Obviously killing enemies on the way for experience but don't go out of your way to hunt down guys. Just run and gun. Now with ROM, I'm kind of iffy on, like there are usually chests in the buildings that you can see as you run through it so it's not really that bad to grab them, but at the same time you can usually just run on the outskirts of the cities and aggro very little and just get to the boss. I'd say early on when time isn't such a big deal you can kind of go through ROM and clear it all out, but later on it's probably not worth the time to check the buildings. Now most of the temple and ruin areas are just like maze like for, and I just cannot deal with those, I hate those, I just beeline it to the boss, fuck everything else. Now Corsus is hands down my favorite area. There are so many chests here, especially in the sewer areas. Plus there's a ton of special enemies that drop skill books. I clear these maps out for the most part until I have like all the gear I need. Love Corsus. Yasha has some good and bad maps, like the open foresty areas are too large so I usually just run through those, but occasionally I will stop at a bridge or a hut because there's usually a chest there. Now the canopy areas I kind of treat the same, I try to run through them but if I see a chest on the way I'll get it. The underground areas in the stone temples are packed full of loot though. Clear those things out, there's a great amount of loot in there. Pick that stuff up. Now when you get to your bosses, it's it's kind of on you. You really, really need to know your boss fights. Hell, it's even stated right here on the survival card. Dying is not an option, like literally. Even in groups, man, if someone goes down, you lose so much momentum with ads and stuff, it's just a pain to recover. 
So as much as it sucks to say, you really just kind of got to get good with the bosses. I can't give you advice on this area, sadly. Just do know that not all bosses are in survival. Eslan, Sesnia, and the Dreamer are not here, as well as the Siege Event bosses like Root Mother, Blink Thief, Root Horror, Reanimator, stuff like those. So there's only like 24 bosses in survival. You will get no duplicates until you're down to like the last few, then it resets and you start over, but for the most part, no duplicates. There are some bad combinations of bosses and modifiers to get early on, like Hardy Barb Terror was the first boss I had once. Fuck, that was a pain in the ass. So much life. But all that's just kind of RNG at that point. You can't do much about it. So once you're getting through some of the bosses and you get good streaks, you will notice the enemies will catch up to you and start to outlevel you. That's where you really need to pick up the pace. Now one of my favorite things to do to try to outpace the enemies is to grab the Ring of Shadows, which lowers your aggro radius, and grab Heartseeker, which gives you 100% crit chance to enemies who aren't aggroed. Then grab a Crossbow or a Devastator and you can literally just run through the maps, sniping down enemies safely and moving to the boss. It's probably the best thing I've seen to deal with the maps at higher levels. Just run and shoot. Now if you're looking for a section that has builds used for survival, well there's not. All the gear is RNG, so trying to determine what build is kind of nonsensical. Like I said earlier though, just look for stuff you're comfortable with. All normal builds work fine in survival, like the Slayer Sniper build is really good. Oseus and Radiant crit sets are really good. Cultist Lab mod power generators are really good. Just don't use melee. Summoners actually work pretty well in survival due to how the scaling works. So if you can get turrets and beckon, great. But since bosses are kind of RNG, there's no promises that it'll show up. And since you can't guarantee you'll get the loot you need, you just kind of have to play on the fly and be ready to use whatever the game throws at you anyway. Now, survival is a great way to experiment with builds and weapons, and I definitely use a lot of weapons in survival that I would never use on my own, so it's kind of fun in that regard. For my own personal taste, though, I'm a huge fan of mod power builds. Using Cultists and Labyrinth armors, there's a lot of good mods you can use and can swap in and out of your weapons, which gives the build a lot of diversity. And it's pretty easy to set up since there's two armor sets you can work with and a ton of mods. Nothing is really mandatory for these sets, just focus on whatever mods you can get and anything that does mod stuff. Explosive Shot is sold at the Weapon Obelisk, always a good pickup, I love Explosive Shot. But again, this is just me. I've seen sniper builds go very far as well, like 40 plus in, so those obviously work. But yeah, that's kind of the survival guide. There's not so much of a guide, but more about tricks and tips, I guess. It's kind of all up to you because there's so much of this is just RNG. And you just got to get experience, get the loot, get the bosses, and get good. So thank you all for watching, and good luck out there, hunters.